Hello everyone. Um, today, once again, I'm going to be dropping another drama bomb and citing another instance of somebody plagiarizing. Hmm. Um, before I begin, I want to say that I've seen a couple YouTubers already saying that, oh, we've heard enough about the, the theoretical bullshit being ripped off by Jacqueline Glenn, you know, and, and all of you are, are kind of plagiarizing you know, the, the Purdue non-theists, and, and you'll, you all just need to, you know, Wrap it up, you know. Let's talk about something else. Um, motherfuckers. Each video in my series on this topic has not been talking about uh, the Purdue non-theist as its feature. No, I've been featuring a separate instance of plagiarism pretty much uh, every day for the past few days. And <clears throat> this is no different. So... <sighs> Know your role, shut your mouth. Um, that's a quote from The Rock, by the way. Citation. Uh, but, you know, if that's what you do on YouTube, is to wait for, you know, something to gain steam, like, say, a hashtag that's going around, and wait for it to get, like, ten people in your subscriptions list to talk about it, and then that's your, your chance to jump in and say, hey, we've seen enough of that. Let's talk about something else. If that's what you do, um, you should probably shoot for some higher aspirations. Like what I'm about to do here, okay? Just saying. Um, and because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make each of these videos be a little bit more positive and teach a lesson in these, here's the lesson in this one. Um, you don't have to quote someone directly to be plagiarizing. You could just present an idea as if it's your own, and that idea, when when looked at subjectively, could be so original and so new, and then when you try to, you know, just rephrase that idea and pass it off on your, as your own, it could still be plagiarism if you're not citing your source. Now, one argument that I've seen from a couple YouTubers, especially in uh, Jacqueline Glenn's uh, interview on the Drunken Peasants podcast with uh, TJ, the Amazing Atheist. TJ said, well, a lot of us will do internalizing. Right? Internalizing. And so he's done it before with a George Carlin joke, um, where he thought that he came up with it because he'd been carrying it with him in his mind for a very long time. And... Yeah, that, that can happen with things that have been around for a while, but what we're going to talk about today is a little bit fresher, okay? And, you know, if, if you want to talk about comedians that might be uh, having their comedic stylings uh, misattributed uh, to a YouTuber, go ahead and look at uh, Jacqueline Glenn talking about um, we only give God credit for good things, but when the bad things, yada, 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 um, God works in, in mysterious ways. Go Then go look at some uh, Jim Jeffries comedy, and you'll see, hmm, it's not exactly an original idea. Um, but that's not what the, 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 the topic of this video is. Um, in this video, I want to say that uh, we're going to be looking at Jacqueline Glenn's video, Evolution vs. God, An Atheist Review, uh, wherein she is uh, rebutting some arguments made by Ray Comfort in his work, Evolution vs. God. <clears throat> so, pay attention to the whole An Atheist Review tag on the end of her uh, video, because she is trying to be scholarly, okay? And a little aside here, I've had a few people come to me with the argument that I shouldn't be holding her to an academic standard because she's ditzy, slutty, mindless, I shouldn't expect as much from her, yada, yada, yada. Um, and, and I'm just left wondering, who's attacking and who's defending her? <laughs> Here, because I'm I'm saying she's not meeting, you know, a certain level of of scholarly standard, and you guys are saying what? Um, she she's not capable of it because 
Um, anyways, don't do her any favors, okay? She's trying to be scholarly. Watch the video, link below, watch her video, and tell me that she's not putting on an air of being scholarly. And since she's trying to be that, that's what I'm grading her on, okay? Um, I'm not making the argument at all that she cannot meet the standard that we're setting for her here, okay? That's on a couple of you guys, and work on your issues. Um, so, uh, at around two minutes in her video, she throws up some uh, screen caps of Dawkins, and ha ha ha, very funny, but uh, around six minutes in, she is using Dawkins' arguments and work from the book The Ancestor's Tale, specifically The Salamander's Tale, and she's not crediting him one bit. Um, ironically, uh, Richard Dawkins then tweets her out and says, Oh my goodness, she's the second coming of, of Hitchens. Um, and, you know, gives her praise. And, and I think maybe the old coot's been around the block so many times that he can't recognize his own words being fed back to him, maybe. Um... But also during that sequence, she is using an image from Carmatics.com of California Salamanders. She should have attributed all the infographics that weren't originally hers. Um, the next bit of uh, plagiarism and not attributing shit in uh, her video is when she's talking about the Green Warbler. Now, uh, she kind of personalizes this information by you know, personally hand-drawing out a diagram to show you guys um, how the Green Warbler, you know, went one way around the Himalayas and then the other way around the Himalayas and, and where those clines met after, you know, changing little by little within this species. When they met at the, the northern end, they couldn't interbreed anymore, so it's like there's two different species. That's the, the description of ring species she's trying to get at. Um... Yeah, this is really uh, fringe science that you wouldn't really learn outside of uh, being a science lover or uh, zoology class, maybe. Uh, and maybe one of her biomedical sciences classes that she talks about in the description box of her video where she should be citing anything, anything at all from her video, just everything that is not her uh, information. But um, it'd be hard for me to try to apply the Amazing Atheist's uh, internalizing uh, argument to this. Like, the, the information about the Green Warblers has only come out in, in like, the, the past 15 years as, as far as uh, being one of the, the ring species that, that gets cited a lot, if you're talking about ring species. Um... So it hasn't been around for her whole life or my whole life, like George Carlin's jokes were for The Amazing Atheist. Um, also, uh, I don't think that she has experience traveling around Southeast Asia chasing little green-ish birds to see if they will mate. So um, I don't understand how she would feel like this is her information with, that she doesn't have to cite when she's trying to refute somebody else's uh, scholarly-ish work, you know, and putting on this air of being scholarly. Um, she doesn't cite anyone at all, and there's only like a handful of people that it could have been, you know, that she ultimately got this information from. There's not many researchers on it. I'll link a couple in the description box, but um, maybe she got it from a general textbook that she never read the, the sources you know, maybe she's remembering this from a bioscience class, but it's not her work. It's um, just unattributed. In fact, she says to Ray Comfort in the video, there, there's plenty of evidence, and there's none of it linked in the description box. There's no citations in the video for the Green Warbler information. It's just put out there as if it came from her. So at the end of her video, okay, where she is showing that she's trying to be scholarly, she actually cites Lawrence Krauss in, the, in this physics portion of her video. 
and she cites him so well that it actually looks like a commercial for his book. You know, he, she puts the graphic of the book up there and everything. Um, so, yeah, she is trying to be scholarly, and that is why I'm holding her to this standard. She did plagiarize, and, and that's that. Um, I welcome, though, any... Uh, email or correspondence that she's had with uh, Richard Dawkins or Per Alstrom or uh, Carmatics.com or some of the other instances that you guys can probably find um, in that video. Any instance of somebody saying, yes, you can use my work without attribution. If she wants to submit, you know, oh yes, I got permission to say things that way without giving attribution, maybe uh, we'll give her a pass on one of those. But uh, there's quite a lot of correspondence you'd have to collect there, huh? We found a lot of these. Um, so I'm going to close this video with uh, some insight from my daily work. Um, some of you know what I do for a living, but uh, let's just say I, I want to make an allegory from, from a therapist's perspective. Um, imagine somebody comes to you and they have been raped, right? And their main concern in not coming out about this rape is, oh my goodness, I, I don't want to hurt him, you know? I, I don't want to hurt his future if I, if I you know, you know I, I, I could probably say that maybe, you know, I, I let him on a little bit, you know, I... I I wowed him with my brains or boobs or whatnot. And, you know, his future would be over if this came out, you know. So I don't want to, I don't want everyone to know that, that, that this happened. Imagine that was uh, something that was on their mind. And, and that happens actually more frequently than, than you know. Um, let's say that that happens. Um, what advice do you give that person? I would say if, if you're a fan of Law & Order SVU, you probably say, Scream it loud and proud! You were raped, and he's a rapist, and you're not going to stand for it anymore, right? And why? Because they're probably going to go on to rape other people if you don't, right? That's a, that's a really good reason. Well... Let's apply this to uh, Jacqueline Glenn. Um, she makes a video that's obviously uh, plagiarizing theoretical bullshit, and then when she gets called out on it, she contacts him, or he contacts her, but in that exchange, um, she characterizes it as his idea to not come out and say that she plagiarized to save her career and her future by characterizing it as, you know, I was inspired, you know, um, I had internalized some of what he said and, and it came out very close. What do you think was on theor theoretical bullshit's mind when he was making this deal with her? Um, can you imagine the position that he would be in, seeing as some of us know what he does for a living, um, and, you know, tabloids are always out to get people like him and ruin their careers. And this is a, a constant thing in his line of work. Um, imagine what he's thinking about, you know. Let's not be part of a, a tabloid salacious thing, you know. Um, let's not ruin her career and my career with this thing coming out. Um... If it were to catch fire in, say, The Sun or Weekly World News or whatever, the National Enquirer, there would be a focus on the fact that this daytime soap star is an atheist. So he's afraid of stuff coming back on him. He's afraid of her career being 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 hit by this. He, he doesn't want uh, this community to be racked by another scandal. And so he's left... With, with the the baggage here of having to come up with a way for her to not 
be called out for her plagiarism. And what happens? We find instance after instance of her doing it again and again and again because he didn't stand up and say it loud and proud. She stole from him. That's wrong. And she needs to stop. And she needs to be called out about it. And any one of you who say that you've heard too much of this, when each one of my videos is bringing up a separate instance of it, shut your mouth. Okay? 